The American Cancer Society reported that 20% of colon cancer diagnoses in 2019 were in patients under the age of 55, which is around double the rate as it was in 1995. Joining me now live is Dr. John Marshall, a member of the Medical Scientific Advisory Committee for the Colorectal Cancer Alliance. Doctor, thank you for taking the time to be with me. Why are we seeing this rise in younger people getting colon cancer? Wouldn't it be good to know the answer to that question as why sure. we are seeing it? So I'm dressed like a doc because I am in the middle of my clinic right now. And, and I'm an old doc, as you can see. And a long time ago, you know, there was nobody in my clinic under the age of 50. And now about half of my clinic is under the age of 50. And we don't like it at all. And these are healthy, fit, able people. No real strong history of colon cancer or cancers in general. So we are looking hard and fast to figure out why this is happening. Yeah, I mean, Chadwick Boseman, 43 years old, so young. A lot of people remember him as the actor in Black Panther. He died uh, of colon cancer. How young should someone be when they get a colonoscopy? Well, the old standard was 50 years of age. And as you can see already from my comments is that's not enough. They've moved it officially to 45, but even that's not enough if we look at the numbers of folks that are 20, 30, and 40 who have this disease. So really what we're about is trying to find a better, more effective screening test. That doesn't mean don't go out there and get screened if you're in the right category. But for those who are not, we need to figure out a better screening test. Ultimately, we hope a blood test, maybe a stool test to figure this out. But more importantly than screening, quite honestly, is figuring out what the heck's going on. What are we doing in our society? Is it nutrition? Is it something that's in our food, not in our food? Is it antibiotics? Um, what are we doing that is causing these, this shift uh, in young people? Not just colon cancer too, other GI cancers. We're seeing an increase in breast cancer and others as well. So understanding this is becoming really job number one for most of us in the cancer research field. Yeah, because just going back to the colonoscopy part, I, I typically would think of people in their 40s, their 50s. I mean, I'm 36 years old. I mean, is this something I should be thinking of, people my age? Well, right now you could think about it, but probably your insurance wouldn't cover it at this point unless you had some sort of symptom. So your radar net does need to be up, blood in the stool, change in bowel habits, this kind of thing. The medical community has gotten savvier about recognizing these symptoms in younger people, not just waving it off and saying, oh, it's hemorrhoids or something else you ate, but really acknowledging that it could be an early colon cancer and so recommending younger people for colonoscopies. The current standard is 45. In the absence of a family history, uh, in the absence of any symptoms is 45. Even with that though, we are seeing many, many people postponing, not doing, forgetting, delaying, and we really need to change that. We need everybody in their mid-40s to have this on their radar and get this test done. Are we seeing a rise as well, uh, not just men, but also women? It is equal. Um, and it's, it, it, you know, a lot of the early talk was these were obese people. These were people with other medical problems that was causing their colon cancers. But the more we look at this, I, I sort of jokingly say, no, it's not. It's a bunch of marathon running, cardboard eating patients. So, yeah, you can put that list up there of things that we're supposed to be doing less of. Um, but even the people who are doing lots of the right thing, if you will, nothing on the naughty list and lots of stuff on the good list, they're still showing up in my office. So that's why we need to have a better understanding of what the heck's going on here. One of the leading thoughts is something around called microbiome. And this is the bacteria that live in our GI tracts and our mouths all around us. Um, and in fact, in medical school still today, we learn very little about the microbiome, this sort of partner in life that we have of these bacteria, this sort of coral reef, this rainforest of bacteria that live in and around us that are part of our health. And most of us feel that the secret to this is going to be in uncovering the secrets of the microbiome. How important is it to catch it early? What does that mean for someone if, if they're able to, to detect it before it's too late? Remember, colon cancer is one of those that we could detect sometimes before it's even cancer, a benign polyp. You remove that, you never get cancer in the first place. And so the second is if you catch it earlier, 
our stage one cure rates are in the 90, 95% range. And so we want to find these tumors before you know they're there. That's the point of screening. And so you don't wait for symptoms. You don't sit around on symptoms that you already have. The test is not that bad. Go ahead and get it if you're worried. Uh, Dr. John Marshall with the Colorectal Cancer Alliance. Thank you so much for your time, your expertise. What an important story. We appreciate it. Thanks, Kevin.